Hey there! I got a pen from penchalet.com. I had good contact with Ron there, and he sent me this really nice Conklin glider. Now, I want you to know that there was an interesting thing. I'm going to tell you that at the end of the talk part of this video. If you're interested in this pen, or any other pen that the Pen Chalet sells, then you might get a reduction if you make it all the way to the end of the video. So, listen up. First, I'm going to cover this pen. Conklin, established 1898, was one of the big four of the American um, uh, pen companies at some point, along with uh, Parker and uh, all the other ones. Schaefer wasn't that one. Uh, a little rusty. Um, it's an interesting pen. Uh, it's the glider in ivory. It has a stub nib, and it's quite nice. So we open the box. Out comes another box, which looks like this. Open it up. This folds up. It's a little Conklin uh, sheet. Explains you something about Conklin, tradition, etc. And then you have the pen. The pen is fascinating. Um, just rearranging some boxes there. Here we have the actual pen. They come in a bunch of finishes. This is the ivory finish. Um, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do writing sample. Now, start at the very top of the pen, you get this sort of nice brass colored copper, well, maybe it's more copper colored. It says Conklin, established 19, 1898. You get the clip. The clip has that same color, it's a bit more shiny. It says Conklin. We have a center band. Uh, the center band says, and again, the same color, Conklin, Conklin and um, USA. And then you have the whole pen. The pen has an interesting texture. I'm not sure why you can see that, but there is a, an interesting texture. I'm trying to get the lighting as good as I can. They see it a bit. An interesting texture. Uh, the barrel is just slightly, slightly tapered and ends in the same uh, color. So there's no end cap or anything. You can post the pen, and you get a pretty big pen um, that is definitely a bit top heavy, not super so, but still a bit. Um, here you got the pen section, traditional hourglass, threads. I don't really feel those threads when I write, so that's good. Uh, very comfortable to hold, uh, decent size. And we got the stub nib. It's a steel nib, and it's a Conklin. It says Conklin Toledo, USA. It's a 1.1 millimeter stub. And that's uh, that's all. Let's do it. Open up the pen. You get a, a cartridge converter. You can put in standard international cartridges. Or this converter. The converter has a threaded end, so you screw it into the section instead of just pushing it in. Be mindful of that. And that's all there's to as to the pen. What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, I like the looks. I think it's an interesting pen. It reminds me a little bit of the Laban. Laban has a couple of designs that are this color. As I said, there were multiple finishes. Now, I, I enjoy the uh, ivory color and this sort of copper uh, colored clip, etc. I think that looks nice. Um, I like the size. It's OK. Um, it, it, in, in my mind, it feels a little bit um, plasticky. It, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, I don't know, it, it doesn't feel like an extremely high-end pen. And that doesn't mean it's not a good pen, but that's that's my impression. Um, as to the nib, the nib gives nice line variation. 1.1 millimeter stub is a, is a nice uh, uh, width of a nib. Uh, works well. It writes smoothly. No issues there. My one issue with the nib is that it runs dry. I wrote an A4 page of text because I was taking notes, um, and just in one go. And at some point, the nib stopped writing. So I may have to tune it up a bit. Just holding it up to the light. Yeah, it's difficult to see with ink in there. Uh, may increase the, the, the gap between the times a little bit, but it's definitely a bit of a dry writer. I talked to someone else who had another Conklin model, and she also she had a also a broad or a stub on there, and she said I had the exact same thing. So I'm not sure whether it's a Conklin thing, um, but in any case, uh, be prepared for that. Try out the pen extensively in a store if you, if you really want to uh, avoid that. Um, Having said that, I mean, it's a nice nib, smooth nib, good line variation. It's, for me, it's not a huge issue to just, while I'm writing, unscrew the pen and, and um, 
prime the feed a bit with some ink from the converter. But of course, you, you could ask, is, is that something that you should do at this price point, right? That, that's, that's something that you, you could ask yourself, I suppose. Having said that, I think it's a pretty cool pen. Uh, first Conklin I've ever used. I think they, if, if this is um, a good example of their pens, they look nice. Uh, they, they, they work fairly well. Um, it also says glider, by the way. I just noticed that on the center band. Sorry. Um, so, there you go. Now, I've told you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I take some quick measurements, and then I have an important message. I get 30 grams as to weight. Length is 140 millimeters capped. It's a big one. Then we get 122 millimeters uncapped. Section diameter at the, at the narrowest point. I get about 11 millimeters and all the way up to the end down where it meets the barrel. I got 12 millimeters. Okay, now what's the deal? If you like this pen or another pen that's available from penchalet.com, you get a reduction. Use the code SBRE Brown and you'll get a 10% reduction on anything you want to buy which I think is pretty cool. So, Ron, thanks a lot for setting that up. I'm sure you're going to make pen collectors all over the world very happy with that. Use that code. At some point, it's going to expire. But, for now, it's going to be good. So, uh, this is uh, December 2013. We'll see how that works out. And um, I hope this was useful. Enjoy the reduction. And uh, writing sample. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right. So here we go with the Conklin Glider. The nib is a stub. It's a 1.1 millimeter italic, I think, because it doesn't have any tipping. Uh, and the ink, uh, to be entirely honest, guys, I forgot. I'm sorry. I, I have so many pens inked up to review, sometimes I forget. Do a bit of writing. As you can see, nice juicy line, um, and that's the problem with this pen. It starts out very wet, and as I said, it's it, it runs dry as you as you go across the page. I'm not sure whether I can replicate that here because we're not going to do a full page of writing. I don't want to bore you to death. But believe me, on decent quality paper, I have had the um, pen run dry on me completely to the point that it didn't write anymore. So. Apart from that, I mean, it's easy to fix, right? All you have to do is just prime the feed a bit. Like that, push some ink in there, and screw up the pen again, and you can go. The question is, at this price point, is it necessary for a pen, for you to have to do that to a pen? I don't think so. All right, as to wetness, is it Yamabudo? I honestly don't know which one this is. It's a fairly wet pen, not, but I mean, on this paper. On other papers, it's a lot drier, and I've seen much wetter pens than this. Um, line variation, well, of course, this being an italic, you get natural line variation because of the shape of the nib that is uh, sort of. Whoops. It's kind of like this. It's flat at the end instead of having the round tipping that a normal pen has. Okay, so you'll get natural line variation, but also if you exert pressure, you can squeeze out some more line variation. You have to be careful, of course. That's what you can do. So, there we go. A fascinating pen. I asked to reverse writing. It is an italic, so no tipping. I think it's going to run dry quickly. Yeah, so what you see here, that is what I have seen on full A4 pages of writing. It just runs dry and it stops writing. For now, this seems okay. So, I thank Ron from the Pen Chalet for supplying me with this pen. I also thank him for the very kind reduction code. You enter that. Not in caps. Um, uh, at your checkout, and you'll get a 
10% discount from penchalet.com. I hope this was useful, guys, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.